In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister in the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare unto you the entire forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all.
Generous God, your Son gave his life that we might come to peace with you. Give us a share of your Spirit, and in all we do, empower us to bear the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Welcome to Augsburg, and we give thanks for your presence here today. And if you're visiting with us, a special welcome to you. And please let us know how we can walk with you in your faith journey. It's a busy time as we're back at almost full speed in the life of community. And in doing so, we're mindful of what's to come in the months ahead. Uh, we have learned that we will be once again a shelter host in partnership with City with Dwellings for this upcoming shelter season and that Augsburg will be hosting an overflow shelter from the months of December to March. Uh, this has always been part of Augsburg's identity out in the community, an important part of who we are as many of you volunteer and give your gifts of time and meals to share in that. So we'll have a first introductory meeting this Tuesday evening. That announcement is not in your bulletin, but Tuesday evening via Zoom, and we'll send out a flock note tomorrow getting you connected to all that. Pastor Katie looks forward to leading and working with you all in that. And if you have any questions, you can reach out to her. Also a reminder that we will remember the life of Rita Toivonen Wednesday evening at 6.30 in the Columbarium. And all are welcome for a brief service as we remember her and commend her life to God. In addition, there's a number of announcements in the bulletin that I draw your attention to today and share a word of thanksgiving on behalf of our partners at Christ Beloved Community for the Wonderful gifts that you all shared in food this past Thursday at our community food drive. Our service continues now as we hear God's word. A reading from Numbers. The rabble among them had a strong craving. And the Israelites also wept again and said, if only we had meat to eat. We remember the fish we used to eat in Egypt for nothing. The cucumbers, the melons, the leeks, the onions, and the garlic. But now our strength is dried up, and there is nothing at all but this manna to look at. Moses heard the people weeping throughout their families, all at the entrances of their tents. Then the Lord became very angry, and Moses was displeased. So Moses said to the Lord, Why have you treated your servants so badly? Why have I not found favor in your sight that you lay the burden of all this people on me? Did I conceive all this people? Did I give birth to them that you should say to me, Carry them in your bosom and nurse as a suckling child to the land that you promised on oath to their ancestors? Where am I going to get meat to give all these people? For they come weeping to me and say, Give us meat to eat. I am not able to carry all this people alone, for they are too heavy for me. If this is the way you are going to treat me, put me to death at once. If I have found favor in your sight, and do not let me see my misery. So the Lord said to Moses, Gather for me seventy of the elders of Israel, whom you know to be the elders of the people and officers over them. Bring them to the tent of meeting and have them take their place there with you. So Moses went out and told the people the words of the Lord, and he gathered 70 elders of the people and placed them all around the tent. Then the Lord came down in the cloud and spoke to him and took some of the spirit that was on him and put it on the 70 elders. And when the Spirit rested upon them, they prophesied, but they did not do so again. Two men remained in the camp, one named Eldad and the other Medad, and the Spirit rested on them. They were among those registered, but they had not gone out to the tent, and so they prophesied in the camp. And a young man ran and told Moses, Eldad and Medad are prophesying in the camp. And Joshua, son of Nun, the assistant of Moses, one of his chosen men, said, My Lord Moses, stop them. But Moses said to him, Are you jealous for my sake? What that all the Lord's people were prophets, and that the Lord would put his spirit on them. The word of the Lord.
A reading from James. Are any among you suffering? They should pray. Are any cheerful? They should sing songs of praise. Are any among you sick? They should call for the elders of the church and have them pray over them, anointing them with oil in the name of the Lord. The prayer of faith will save the sick, and the Lord will raise them up, and anyone who has committed sins will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to one another and pray for one another so that you may be healed. The prayer of the righteous is powerful and effective. Elijah was a human being like us, and he prayed fervently that it might not rain, and for three years and six months it did not rain on the earth. Then he prayed again, and the heaven gave rain, and the earth yielded its harvest. My brothers and sisters, if any among you wanders from the truth and is brought back by another, you should know that whoever brings back a sinner from wandering will save the sinner's soul from death and will cover a multitude of sins. The word of the Lord. Gospel according to Mark. John said to Jesus, Teacher, we saw someone casting out demons in your name and we tried to stop him because he was not following us. But Jesus said, Do not stop him, for no one who does a deed of power in my name will be able soon afterward to speak evil of me. Whoever is not against us is for us. For truly I tell you, whoever gives you a cup of water to drink because you bear the name of Christ will by no means lose the reward. If any of you put a stumbling block before one of these little ones who believe in me, it would be better for you if a great millstone were hung around your neck and if you were thrown into the sea, if your hand causes you to stumble, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life maimed than to have two hands and go to hell to the unquenchable fire. And if your foot causes you to stumble, cut it off. It is better for you to enter the life lame than to have two feet and to be thrown into hell. And if your eye causes you to stumble, Tear it out. It is better for you to enter the kingdom of God with one eye than to have two eyes and be thrown into hell where their worm never dies and the fire is never quenched. For everyone will be salted with fire. Salt is good, but if salt has lost its saltiness, how can you season it? Have salt in yourselves and be at peace with one another. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We have all heard or used the phrase, don't judge a book. By its cover. It is a metaphorical phrase that means that we should not judge the value or worth of something or of someone by their outward appearance, for we know that appearances can be deceiving and things aren't always as they seem. I wonder if you have ever judged a book by its title. For example, The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe is a story about a lion, a witch, and a wardrobe. But the book, Little Women, isn't actually about 
little women. Or the book, To Kill a Mockingbird, isn't an instructional book on how to hunt and kill mockingbirds. Using this same line of thinking, how many of us have judged the fourth book of the Bible, Numbers, by its title? There may be some here who have not read or even considered reading the book of Numbers because it might be similar to a math book or a book of statistics or, well, just numbers that will clutter our minds. The title of the book we know as Numbers was originally titled In the Wilderness in the Hebrew language. When the Hebrew Bible was translated into Greek and then English, its title was changed to Numbers because the first two chapters recount a census taken of the Israelites. To some, that may sound boring enough to decide to read something else, but they've missed out. The stories in this book are fascinating, action-packed at times. Other times, readers are left with more questions than answers, especially as it relates to the freedom of God's spirit to shape and move a community. The book of Numbers describes the journey of the Israelites as they wandered in the wilderness, making their way toward the promised land of Canaan. The book of Numbers tells us of God's presence and provision for God's people while they wander. Sadly, the people cannot see it because their faulty memory has them weeping and longing for what they left behind in Egypt. They are so preoccupied with nostalgia from their false memory of the past that they are unable to recognize God's presence and provision for them in the present. In today's lesson on the surface, it appears that this community-wide complaint or complaints are about food. You heard Pastor Paul read it. They ate fish in Egypt for nothing. They wanted leeks and melons and garlic and cucumbers, and I admit that sounds wonderful. But they did not want the provision of manna that God had given them. Not only are they misremembering what their life was like in Egypt, they've somehow forgotten things like the back-breaking labor they experienced or what happened to their babies. They have grown dissatisfied with what God had provided for them and their ingratitude, their craving for something other than what God has given them has caused them to reject God's provision. Their false memory and complaining has them longing to return to their lives of slavery in Egypt. Both God and Moses are angered at the people's complaints. Moses has reached his breaking point. He was beyond weary from the people's constant complaining that continued to blind them from recognizing God's grace. He was overwhelmed as he heard families weeping at the entrance of their tents. God saw and heard it all, and God provided for the Israelites and for Moses. God did not turn away or give up on them, And despite the people's complaints that what God had given them was not good enough, despite their ungrateful and greedy behavior, God stayed with them. And when Moses 
poured out his soul to God, admitting that he could not continue to carry the leadership mantle, the weight of people's needs, their complaints, and their suffering. He asked God to let him die. I doubt very many of us have had to deal with the gravity of the circumstances that Moses did, but I think that maybe many of us have reached a breaking point sometime in our lives where there appears to be no solution. We are too overwhelmed to do anything else and we just want out. God did not deal immediately with the Israelites' complaints. And I encourage you to keep reading the book of Numbers to find out what happened in this regard. But God turned his attention to Moses. In the Old Testament times, only a few leaders and prophets had the gift of the Holy Spirit, and Moses was one of them. After he poured his heart out to God, the very same spirit that God gave to Moses, God gave to dozens of others to help support and encourage Moses and the Israelites as they continue in the wilderness. We are journeying through a wilderness ourselves. We are 19 months into a global pandemic that some thought would only last a few weeks or maybe months. And although our wilderness is different in many ways than the one the Israelites experienced, there are some similarities. We find ourselves in this in-between season. We are in between pre-pandemic life and post-pandemic life. Like the Israelites, we have lived and we continue to live in the midst of uncertainty. We don't know how this in-between season will end or when it will end. And we really aren't sure what our lives will be like after. Prolonged periods of uncertainty takes its toll on people. We have all been affected by this pandemic, missed milestones, many, many, many services of worship, of celebrations of life and worship to God and commending our loved ones to God in their death. Um, the long-term effects are yet to be realized in our youngest to our very oldest. In their wilderness struggles, the Israelites focused on what was good about the past instead of the ways that God was present with them. Their nostalgia hindered them from experiencing the presence, the provision, and the grace of God. Everyone wants the pandemic to be over. And when it is over, many will say that they want to go back to normal, to the way things were before March of 2020. The truth is, we can't go back. We cannot go totally back to the way things were. There existed many issues and challenges in our lives and in our churches, in our communities, and in our world that we only began to more fully understand during this time of pandemic. Yes, we are tired of adhering to restrictions that prevent us from being with our families and friends. We are bone weary from living and working with an underlying fear of exposure or infection. 
and how we long to cease zooming for extended periods of time until our vision is blurred. What a relief it will be when those things change. But a complete return to life as usual before COVID-19 will cause us to miss opportunities to learn from this pandemic and to see how God has been at work in us in our wilderness journey as God transforms us more and more into the likeness of Christ to respond to the opportunities and challenges that are always before us. For example, hunger in this county existed before the pandemic and it will not go away afterwards. Winston-Salem has 21 food deserts and our city is ranked seventh in a national list of statistics that rate food hardship. God is providing for hungry people in our city and county through the generosity of many of you as we partner with Christ's beloved community in collecting, stocking, and supporting their food pantry like we did this past week. And that is good, but there is more. We are called to do more, and that is perhaps God is nudging you to address the problem of food insecurity and food deserts with our local government to change these statistics and to help find ways to increase the number of community or small retail venues to provide access for affordable and healthy food for our neighbors. So social isolation has been necessary to curb the spread of COVID. This has caused us to become more acutely aware of people experiencing loneliness that was present even before the pandemic and isolation recommendations. As a result, the Spirit has prompted our Keeping in Touch ministry to reimagine their ministry efforts moving forward broadening their scope of contact with people and seeking your help in being a part of this. We know the plight of people experiencing homelessness. As a church and community partner, we offer our space, our time, and our resources so that people can be safe and warm and dry and have a decent night's rest. We now partner with Pastor Emily Norris, with the dwelling, supporting, encouraging, and volunteering as we befriend the people of her faith community. This afternoon, we will be serving lunch at the dwelling, but more importantly, we will be sharing the love of God with them, and they will be sharing the love of God with us. You heard Pastor Paul talk about our shelter season is, is starting soon, and there may be ways that you can serve in this capacity for our neighbors. These are just three examples of many of how we can honor our past and look beyond ourselves and the perimeter of this church to embrace opportunities to be present, to provide, to care, and offer the love of God found in Christ in new and creative ways. I want to pause here for a moment to make sure I have your attention. In the midst of this wilderness that we are all in together, for some of you, your life circumstances may be such that you may not be able to go to do or to serve God, the church, or your neighbors as you would like or have not been able to do in the past or are not able to do as you have done in the past. It may be because of work schedules or school schedules. It may be because you're caring for little ones in your home or adult loved ones. 
It could be a variety of reasons, but this message of hope is for you as well. God is with you. You are not alone. God knows your circumstances, and God knows your heart, and continues to work in your life even if you can't see evidence of it. Others may see that they are more like the Israelites than what they would like to admit. There is a human tendency to want to hold on to the past, to maintain what is known and what is comfortable. Yet we know that God was with the Israelites as they floundered and wandered and complained. And God was at work in their lives, forming and transforming them. The same is true for us. Let us learn from the Israelites. In the waters of baptism, we are buried with Christ, dying to sin and rising with him to new life. We are sealed with the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit abides within all of us, and the Holy Spirit abides with us, journeying with us our whole life long, even in the wildernesses of life. But being both saint and sinner, we crave that which holds us back from the freedom of sin that God gives, and we often forget that God's presence and provision for us is our gift. And just like with the Israelites, God doesn't give up on us either. Despite our reluctance to imagine and engage in new life, despite our tendency to be self-centered, and desire comfort, God stays with us. God does not abandon us in our sinful ways. God invites us each week to the table to receive the forgiveness of sin as God feeds us and sustains us with the body and blood of Christ. As we continue in our own wilderness struggles, let us recognize and give witness to the presence, the provision, and grace of God. Let us share how God is using our experiences to transform us more and more into the likeness of Christ. And out of deep gratitude for all that God offers and gives us, let us respond in living out our call to love the Lord with all our heart and our soul and our mind, and let us love our neighbors as ourselves in whatever way God calls. Amen.
together in trust and hope, we profess our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. May children and heirs of God's promise, we pray for the church, the world, and all in need. We pray for the church and its ministry. Bless the newly baptized and encourage them in their journey of faith. Sustain all members of the body of Christ in lives of prayer, service, and worship. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for natural wonders of your creation. Restore damaged forests, waterways, and natural habitats, and lead us to be good stewards of what you have provided reminding us to care for those who have suffered because of natural disaster. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for those in authority. Give them wise minds and compassionate hearts. Strengthen them in a desire to protect the vulnerable and care for those underserved. Bring a sense of cooperation where partisanship gets in the way of your work. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for those who struggle each day with diseases known and diseases unknown. Provide them with peace and resilience for the days ahead. Sustain caregivers with energy and patience. Today we lift up Peg Keller, Marcia Smith, the Michael Robinson family, Jessica Holmes, Kathy Burton, Marian April, Jay Wise, Glenn Blackman, Eula Mae Hutchins, Mamie Cox, Bob Milner, Dan Moore, Hank Farrar, John Paolo Pasquinelli, Susan Sherwin, Robinson family, McLaurin family, Kathy Olson, and all those who we lift up on our lips and in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the worship leaders of this congregation, musicians, and those who work each week as ushers and greeters. Bless their ministry and grant them in their passion to continue in their service. Lord, in your mercy. We give you thanks for all your saints, those we have loved and known, and those from every time and place. Continue to guide us by their example and reassure us of your promised salvation. Today we remember Chuck Romanoli, Pete Smith, Gary Nelson, Elizabeth Coffey, Rick Inman, Emerson Patasol, William Chavis Raynard Maynard Jun Miller Jr., Curtis Diener, Rita Toivonen, Rick Thomas, Barbara Wise, Lauren Kostler, Audrey Grimm, Violet Fowler, Helen DeLuper, Paul Whitman, Barbara Schwartz, Virginia Fries, Mike Cahill. Lord, in your mercy. Receive these prayers, O God, and those in our hearts known only to you, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always.
God, gracious and merciful, you bring forth food from the earth and nourish your whole creation. Turn our hearts towards those who hunger in any way, that all may know your care, and prepare us now to feast on the bread of life, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is being right our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending You are indeed holy, almighty, and merciful, God. You are most holy, and great is the majesty of your glory. You so love the world that you gave your only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. We give you thanks for his coming into the world to fulfill for us your holy will and to accomplish all things for our salvation. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it for all the drinks, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Remembering, therefore, his salutary command, his life-giving passion and death, his glorious resurrection and ascension, and the promise of his coming again, we give thanks to you, O Lord God Almighty, not as we ought, but as we are able. We ask you to mercifully accept our prayers and thanksgiving, and with your word and Holy Spirit to bless us, your servants, and these your own gifts of bread and wine, so that we all who share in the body and blood of Christ may be filled with heavenly blessing and grace, and receiving the forgiveness of sin may be formed to live as your holy people and be given our inheritance with all your saints. To you, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be all honor and glory in your holy church now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. When we eat this bread, we share in the body of Christ. When we drink this cup, we share in the blood of Christ.
keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this healing power of the gift of life. In your mercy, strengthen us through this gift, in faith toward you, and in fervent love toward one another, for the sake of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.